thrilled to share this day with you all, who are, I think in this day and age, to have actually committed an undergraduate degree, degree to uh, classical studies is the most maverick thing you can do as an American living in the 21st century, so you should be incredibly proud. Uh, when I studied the classics, it wasn't uh, quite as avant-garde thing to do as it is for you. But, um, but it was surprising, and I came to it sort of by a left turn. I was thinking about that a lot today um, as I drove down here. I, I had wanted to be an archaeologist since I was in the second grade. I had a, this was a memorable teacher moment, like look at your teachers and remember them because they will change your lives. I had a teacher in second grade named Mrs. Dawson, and most of that year we studied Sir Arthur Evans' excavations in Knossos. I have no idea why this interest in her. And I thought, I don't know, if, you, if you don't know Knossos, it's, an it's in Crete, it's a mysterious, extraordinary site that nobody has quite deciphered. And when I realized not only that he'd excavated the site, but moved all the things around to fit his interpretation of what he imagined that universe had been, I thought that was even more wonderful. I know this is archaeological heresy. But um, it seemed to me that that was the ultimate act of reclamation and imagination. So I always wanted to be an archaeologist, and um, particularly a classical archaeologist. Uh, and I'd spent a lot of my teenage years down in pits and in Arizona excavating Anasazi ruins, but I really wanted to, to hit the, you know, the real Bronze Age material that was at the core. So I came to Stanford, and my first class, my first day at 9 a.m. Uh, was ancient Greek. I had done Latin all my undergraduate years. I'd never, I mean, my high school years, I'd never done any Greek. And uh, my professor was this extraordinary woman, Helena Foley. Uh, who is still one of my closest collaborators um, today. And I think one of the real Stanford gifts that keeps on giving, unlike many universities, is the relationship of the faculty to the students. It's really uniquely collegial and collaborative, particularly this department. And um, I hope in 30 years you're still um, collaborating with your faculty, because it's really been a joy. Anyway, Helena, uh, the first day of ancient Greek, you learn the alphabet, right? Like that's, what, that's how it begins. But she had this unique way of teaching, so we learned the alphabet, and then we read Brekkekex, Coax, Coax, Brekkekex, Coax, Coax, which is what the frogs say in Aristophanes' comedy when they jump on at the beginning of the play, which I thought was totally thrilling that my first day at Stanford I was reading Aristophanes in Greek. So I was completely hooked. I had never, I'd done dance and other things. I had never had any real interest in the theater, and I fell in love with the theater through Helena and through that class, um, and we had, those were sort of in the hippie days at Stanford before Silicon Valley when faculty members lived in co-ops and houses that nobody could afford except, I don't know, you know, in Palo Alto, and so we staged, before Skit existed, we staged Greek tragedies in the courtyard, in the backyard of Helena's house, and the late great Jack Winkler, another of my professors, a scholar of the Hellenistic novel who uh, was my thesis advisor when I wrote on the Satyricon, uh, he was uh, the goddess Athena, and he came down the chimney in drag <laughs> as the deus ex machina. So this was my introduction to drama. I always thought anything was possible, um, and it stayed with me very profoundly. I also have my Marsh McCall story because my second year Greek class was taught by Marsh, and that was at 9 a.m. in that corner of the quad. And uh, if you were late, he locked the door right at 9. Does he still do this? I don't know. And uh, you had to parse an irregular verb to get into the class, which meant you either were really early to the class or you didn't show up because that was like the deepest humiliation to fail a verb form in front of Marsh McCall. Um, during my time at Stanford, you know, I, I, pers I did a lot of work in archaeology until I realized that um, I had to also take chemistry and do radiocarbon dating and I failed geological archaeology. I just couldn't make heads or tails of those rocks. And I thought, well, the scientific part of it was not for me, um, but, but there was something about the universe of it that I wanted to hold on to um, and uh, sort of ventured forth into the world. And, uh, you know, the classics will save you every time and always get you into terrible trouble. My first, I did get a Fulbright at Oxford, and my first production was this adaptation of the Satyricon, which I thought, it's Petronius, I didn't make it up, but it is rather salacious if you don't know the Satyricon, and I took as my advertising at Oxford. If you don't know Oxford, it is not like Stanford, it's a very stuffy institution, you have to be very well behaved. And I sent around